Hey everybody, welcome to Board Online, Board Offline. Today we're gonna to be teaching you how to play Frost Haven. This is part 2B in our instructional series and we'll be covering character turns. Now, if you haven't seen the other videos in the series so far, check the description. There'll be links there as well as links to the future videos once they have been released. Before we get into how to play Frost Haven, I do wanna mention our sponsor, Stone Valley Games. Dot com. This is a fantastic, friendly, distant game store. Go check them out. They have all kinds of great stuff. They've got the old hotness, the new classics, the new hotness, the old classics. They've got board games, card games, war games, RPGs, everything you need to scratch that tabletop itch. They can help you out. Also, they've got some great programs. If you are in the United States military and you're stationed overseas at an AA, AE, or AP address, they'll ship to you for free. If you are uh, living in the continental United States and you order $100 or more for them, they'll ship to you for free. And if you are a return customer, they do have a loyalty program as well. So go check them out, stonevalleygames.com. There's a link in the description below. Also, if you enjoy my videos, particularly my instructional videos, which I have quite a few of those on the channel at this point, and you'd like to support the channel, you can find ways to do that in the description below as well, or you could you leave a super thanks in the comments section as well. Either way, any support you throw my way, I absolutely appreciate. And of course, you can just subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up. On a character's turn, unless performing a long rest, they will perform the top action of one of their played ability cards and the bottom action of the other one. They can perform either action first, and it doesn't matter which of these cards was the initiative card, that has no effect on which one is played first. Once played, the cards will be placed somewhere around the character mat. If a card is simply discarded, it is played to the left, which you can see says discard. An active ability card is played on top of the character mat in the active area. And if a card is lost, it's played to the right of the mat in the lost area. Cards in the player's hand are considered completely separate. Character ability cards, which are all unique, determine which actions a character can perform. Let's take a look at what you'll find on an ability card. The card name is found at the top. The initiative value is found in the middle. The card's level is found in the top left. A level X card, as you see here, is considered level one for all purposes in the game. Each card has a top action and a bottom action. Abilities within an action are performed from top to bottom, and abilities are separated by a line. After the action is fully performed, the card is then placed in the character's active area, discard pile, or lost pile, depending on what the card says. A character may also choose simply not to perform an action, in which case the card is discarded with no effect. The card's basic action icons are found here and here. This allows the ability card to be used for to attack on the top section or to move for the bottom section. If used in this way, no other abilities on the card may be activated. Enhancement marks are circles, squares, diamonds, or hexes, and show up next to some ability. Their purpose will be revealed as the campaign progresses. Item cards offer a wide variety of bonuses and extra abilities that can be used in addition to a character's normal two actions per round. Item cards are acquired by looting them during the scenario phase and by purchasing or crafting them during the outpost phase. On an item card, a player will find the item's name, the item cost, which will be the gold cost if it is a purchasable item, or the crafting cost if it is a craftable item. The item's usage is what happens to the item after it has been used. Some items are only spent while others are lost instead. Some items may even be used multiple times first. The item effect shows when the item can be used and what bonus or ability the character gains. This is the item type. Each item counts as one of six different types. 
And some items will have negative modifiers, meaning that when they're brought into a scenario, you will add a number of minus one cards to the character's attack modifier deck. The number of minus one cards to be added will be shown clearly on the card. This is the card's quantity, indicating how many copies of the item exist in the game and which number this copy is within the count. And this is the index number. It's a unique number that identifies the item. When an item is referenced using the index icon, it can be found by its card back. This prevents the party from inadvertently seeing items that they have not yet discovered. All items a character brings into a scenario are placed below their character mat and can be used as specified by the items themselves. A character can use any items as long as it is in their possession. However, characters can only bring a limited number of items into a scenario. Each character can bring one head item, one body item, and one foot item. They can bring up to two one-handed items or one two-handed item. Each character can bring a number of small items indicated by this symbol here to the scenario equal to half their level rounded up. So a level one character can bring one item. So can a level two character. A level three character can bring two items. A character is allowed to own more items than they can bring into a scenario. However, they cannot own more than one copy of any single item. More than one character cannot own the same copy of the same item, and an item may not be traded from one character to another. Now let's talk about item usage in a little bit more detail. This is the spent icon. This means the item is spent after use. This is indicated by rotating the card sideways. Spent items can be recovered the next time the character performs a long rest. This is the lost icon. This means that the item is lost after its use, which will be indicated by flipping the card face down. Lost items cannot be used again for the rest of the scenario unless recovered by some ability. And if the item has this icon here, then there is no ability in the game that can recover it until the end of the scenario. This is the flip icon. If a card has the flip icon, then it is flipped after use. However, on the back will be a new side with a different use. When the other side is used, the item will then be flipped over again to its front side to be used again. The specific timing of when to flip the card will be detailed in that card's text. Characters should always start the scenario with these items on the side with the gold cost or the crafting cost. Some items do not have any of the icons we've discussed. This means the item applies a passive effect. There is no limit to how many times an item with a passive effect can be used. Some items can be used multiple times before they are spent, lost, or flipped. This is indicated by a series of use slots like this. Players will use a character token to track the uses. When an item with multiple uses is recovered, reset the character token to the first use slot. If an item with multiple uses is recovered prior to it being spent, or lost or flipped, then it will still be recovered to the first use slot. All items will always be returned to their original state between scenarios. No item can ever be permanently lost. It's important to note also that items with use slots and passive effects must be used if the item's requirements are met. So in this case, on the next two attacks targeting you, the attacker gains disadvantage. This is whether or not you feel like you need the enemy to gain disadvantage. All other uses of items are optional. It should also be noted that if an item affects an attack, it must be used before the attack modifier card is drawn, and if an item grants an ability, it cannot be used during another ability. If any part of an action is performed, there are certain abilities and effects of that action that cannot be skipped. In such cases, the ability or effect is highlighted in a box with an exclamation point in front of it, as you see here and here. These can include negative abilities, like this one, elemental infusions, like this one, experience points, the lost icon, and the active icon. Experience measures a character's growth and defines when they level up. When an action depicts an experience icon in the lower right corner and any part of that action is performed, the character must gain the indicated amount of experience. This is tracked on the blue side of the dial. 
Sometimes an ability specifies that experience is only gained under certain conditions, such as consuming an element, meeting a requirement, or advancing a character token past an experience point icon between use slots, which would be here when the character token moves past this spot here, one experience point will be gained. Remember, characters do not gain experience by killing monsters automatically. They must perform specific abilities during a scenario to gain experience. End of turn looting occurs when a character ends their turn on a hex that has loot tokens or treasure tiles present. Character must loot that loot token or treasure tile. No figures besides characters will perform end of turn looting. Resting is the main way that a character can retrieve cards from the discard pile. They have two options when they rest, a short rest or a long rest. In both cases, the rest can only be performed if the character has at least two cards in the discard pile. Also, resting will always result in losing one card from the discard pile into the lost pile. During the end of round step, a character may perform a short rest. When a character short rests, they will lose one random card from their discard pile into the lost pile. The remaining cards are returned to their hand. If they would like to keep the card that was lost, they can suffer one damage to lose a different random card instead, returning the one that had been lost to their hand. However, this can only be done once per short rest. In order to conduct a long rest, during the card selection step, the player will declare they are long resting. This will count for their entire turn for the round. This means they will not play two cards, and it will be performed at initiative 99. When a character long rests, they'll follow these steps. First, they choose which card they will lose. The choice must come from their discard pile. It cannot come from what's remaining in their hand. The rest of the discard pile is then returned to their hand. They may then heal to self. They may also recover all of their spent items. And items can be used in the same round in which they are recovered, but keep in mind this is occurring at initiative 99. An action with the lost icon will only be able to be performed once. When any part of this action is performed, it must then be placed. It will remain there until the end of the scenario. If the lost action was used to perform an active bonus ability, such as this one here, the card is still considered lost and must be moved from the active area to the lost pile once the active bonus is no longer in effect. Like items, some actions will have this lost icon instead of the normal one. This means that there is no ability in the game that can recover the card. And so to notate this when it is lost, you'll flip it upside down just to make it easy to remember there's nothing you can do to recover it until the end of the scenario, of course. When a character would suffer any amount of damage after ward or brittle is applied, they must either reduce their hit points by the indicated amount of damage or they must negate their damage. Damage may be negated in two different ways. If a character has an ability or effect that can negate the damage, they can do that, or the character can negate damage with card loss. To do this, the character can choose any one card from their hand and then place it into the lost area, or they can choose any two cards from the discard pile to lose. If the player has not yet taken their turn, the cards they selected during the card selection step are not in their hand or in the discard pile and therefore cannot be lost to negate damage. And remember, even if damage is negated, effects or conditions from the source of damage are still applied. A character will become exhausted in one of two ways. If the character ever reaches zero on their red hit point dial or if the character does not have at least two cards in their hand to play or at least two cards in the discard pile to rest at the start of a round. Keep in mind that becoming exhausted because the character ran out of cards will not affect the character's hit point value. When a character becomes exhausted, all of their ability cards, including any summons or active cards, cards in their hand, 
and cards in their discard pile are placed in the lost pile. Their figure is removed from the map. And keep in mind, this could even occur in the middle of performing an ability. Exhausted characters can no longer participate in the scenario in any way. And exhaustion does not reduce the number of characters in the scenario. Any game effect that is determined by the number of characters will always consider the number of characters that began the scenario. And if all characters become exhausted, the scenario is lost. And that covers everything you need to know about character turns. If you haven't seen the previous videos, be sure to go check them out. Part one was getting started. Part two was scenario gameplay, general rules. And the next part will be monster turns. Then we'll cover campaign overview. And the final part of this six part series will be the outpost phase. We've also got other great stuff coming, how to play Aeon Trespass Odyssey, a uh, Perdition's Mouth gameplay will be coming up soon, how to play 1815 Scum of the Earth, and how to play Nemo's War. Come back for all that great content. Leave us a super thanks if you are so inclined in the comments below. And until next time, if you're bored online, bored offline.